Okay, so welcome to a tutorial for the Westar 35 Mandalorian pistols um, holsters and belt. I'm going to show you how to make your pattern from scratch and what you'll need to do that. So first you need your pistols, obviously. If you don't have any pistols and you want to make some, um, I'm going to have a link in the description to a template and, you know, how to sort of make those. I use this template to make my own, so it's pretty, pretty helpful. So yeah, first you need your pistols, second you need some paper, uh, tracing paper if you have it. Normal paper works just fine. I'll uh, need a pencil, obviously, an eraser, a ruler. Uh, preferably a sewing drafting ruler that is in inches and uh, clear like the one I have here. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon, whatnot. I recommend buying one if you plan on doing more costume stuff with drafting in the future. If not, don't worry about it. Use a normal ruler and I'll see if I can uh, translate my markings from inches to centimeters for you. Um, you'll need paper scissors, fabric scissors, never use your fabric scissors on paper. You'll need vinyl or some kind of leather. Eh, leather is kind of a bit different than vinyl, but you'll have to see what you got. Um, you'll need your sewing machine. You can hand sew it if you have to, but sewing machine is easier. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can hand stitch it, you can glue it, uh, you can figure something out. Uh, you'll need matching thread for your fabric or contrast, whatever kind of uh, image you're going for. If you're doing Death Watch or Sabine or something, you need different, you know, colors. Um, you'll need some Velcro or hook and loop tape. You can get that at Walmart, fabric stores. Um, what else? You need round head fasteners. Uh, my design uses 16. Um, you can get them at Staples. They're for paper, the little paper fasteners. You've probably seen them around. You'll need your reference images to figure out, you know, what kind of style, what kind of color, what kind of belt they have. Uh, you'll need some clever clips, sewing clips, some kind of clip things. Um, I recommend using them. You don't have to. You can use pins, tape, I don't know, something. You'll also need measuring tape. To sort of find your belt measurements and stuff like that. You can also use string and measure the string with a ruler. So now we're going to get on to the steps. You're going to need to measure where you want your belt to hang. If you want it on the hips, if you want it on the waist, if you want it somewhere in the middle. Measure that. Um, you're going to have to add one and a half inches depending on how wide your Velcro is. Basically, my Velcro is three quarters wide. So you take that times two, and that has to be added. Uh, the belt I went for is two inches wide, just the length or the width of my ruler, so it was very easy to draw. Uh, so you want to draw that long rectangle. Uh, you also need to draw two hanging loops for the sides. Uh, make them less than half the belt measurement. You're going to have to fiddle around with it a bit. I don't have any exact measurements for you. But draw it out of paper and plan it out before you cut anything out in fabric. Um, I made my loops two inches wide as well, just to match the belt really well. Um, once you're happy with the loops, figure out where you want them, 
how much of a space you want between the two of them, if you want them to overlap at the back, how close you want them to the front where it connects. Figure that all out. You'll want to mark that on your paper or on your fabric. And then you're going to need to sew the loops in place. Um, or you can use the paper fasteners like I did. You can do two paper fasteners, one paper fastener, four. I went for four. Uh, you just got to figure out what your design needs, what you want to do. I saw one that used four and I thought that looked good, so that's what I did. You can also sew them. Uh, you can sew a box there. You can sew along the edges. Just, you need something to hold it there. Um, next, you need to sew the Velcro on the front openings of the belt. Uh, one's going to be on the front side and one's going to be on the underside so that they'll connect on top of each other. Uh, you'll also, once you're done sewing them on, you'll need to try your belt on to see if it fits, if you need to adjust it, uh, moving the loops around, um, if it's too tight, if it's too loose, figure it all out by putting it on. And then that should pretty much be your belt. And uh, the next thing you're going to do is start working on the gun holsters. So take one of your guns and place it on the paper and trace around the part that's going to be in the holster with a little bit of extra around that. Then you'll need to draw a box roughly one eighth of an inch away from the gun, um, marking the top, the sides, and the bottom. Um, that's just to give you a little extra space. You need to mark where the gun is going to stick out. So just put a little mark there. And then you need to um, draw the curved bit at the top, making sure you're leaving a little bit of space so you can see the uh, the triggers just like your reference images would show um, I don't have any measurements for the top curve you I just sketched it out with uh, you know eyeballing it um, if you want exact measurements use like a plate or a cup for a nice round edge um, once you're done drawing that box for your first side, you're going to need to add seam allowance. This is what you're going to sew. Um, so anywhere that's going to be sewn to another piece needs seam allowance. So you're going to need to add whatever you want for seam allowance. I went with one quarter of an inch. You can add up to like two inches, but I would just do a very, very small seam allowance. So anything from a quarter to a half inch, nothing more than that. I wouldn't go less than a quarter. That might be a little too hard to sew. Um, but once you're done adding the seam allowance, you can go on to the next piece. So you're going to have one longer side and one uh, shorter side. Um, measure the width of the gun. I think it's about an inch and a half on mine. So draw a rectangle an inch and a half by uh, the length of your first piece. Then add seam allowance to two sides. The top and the bottom doesn't need seam allowance because you're not really going to sew anything there. So once you have that box, you're going to do the short side, which is the same thing. The length of the short side of your first piece and the width of the gun itself, which should be exactly the same as your other piece. You don't want two different widths of your gun. And then the next piece is going to be the bottom piece. On your front piece, where the gun is going to stick out, you need to add a small amount of seam allowance. So I added one quarter just in that small piece. And when you get to uh, working on the, uh, the bottom piece, 
You can use your short side and your back to make a small rectangle. And then you add seam allowance to that, which will be a quarter on all sides. And then you'll need to take the corners out. Um, the reason you take the corners out is because it's easier to fold and sew in this way. Uh, hopefully the rest is easy to see with pictures how everything is drafted. So it's gonna it's gonna it's basically gonna be like a paper craft rectangle like those things that you did in uh, like school. You just gotta figure it all out. Hopefully the pictures will help you here. Uh, so once you have the pattern done, it should look like mine. Um, you want to trace it onto your fabric. That shouldn't be too hard. It might be a little difficult because you got a thin piece of paper and some fabric, but once you get that done, you'll need to cut that out. And it'll need two of your front and back pieces. And one will need to be opposite way, so make sure you figure that out when you're cutting it out. And then you need to sew it together. So there's multiple stages of this. Uh, you can start with your front piece or your back piece, it doesn't really matter, and your long side. And you're going to need to line those both up good side to good side. So whatever you want showing needs to be on the inside of that. Long sides together. And then you'll need to sew it, whatever your seam allowance is, a quarter of an inch, half an inch along that side. Uh, you can clip it together, you can pin it together. Then you sew along it. And then it'll look like this. And then you can open it out and it'll look something like this. That's your two pieces sewn together. The next step is you're going to need to open it out and fold it the other way, like I'm showing you here. And then you're going to need to sew along that line as close as you can to the edge. That's going to keep it from flopping around like it already is. It'll give it a straight edge to hold its shape. Because we're not working with leather, we're working with vinyl. It's too floppy. But this will hold it nice. So once you're done sewing along that edge really close, you can have something that looks like this. And once you fold it out, it'll hold it nice along that edge. So then you're going to take your other side, your front, your back, it doesn't really matter which. And you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. You need to clip it together or pin it together. The reason I don't like using pins is that sometimes you can see the holes in your vinyl still and clips just kind of keep that away. So you want to make sure you got that together. You're basically making a rectangle like you would out of a piece of paper. It's just got a different shape on the one side. So hopefully that makes it easier to understand. So once you sew that one, you're going to do the same thing and fold it around and so uh, really close to the edge so you have these two ridges that sort of hold their shape and then we're going to move on to the short side and the short side is going to be sewn on to the other short side you're going to need to do right sides to right sides again so on one side of the front first clip it together sew it and then you're going to need to do, fold it around and do that one close to the edge again, that uh, seam. And then you're going to need to uh, pin it to the other side and sew it to the other side. So now you're going to make a box. And once you're done doing all that, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like a box. And then we're going to work on the... Um, the bottom little tiny flap. Now this is going to be a little tricky, but it should be, shouldn't be too hard to do. You can do it by hand if it's too difficult with a machine. You're going to need to pin the short side 
of the little bottom box to the short piece of the seam allowance on the bottom. And you're going to need to sew it. And then you're going to need to do the other side. And you're going to do all four sides. Uh, one side won't have a seam allowance. Uh, um, mm. One side won't have anywhere to sew to because we want to have a hole there. So what I did is I, even though you have seam allowance, you need to fold it on top and sew it down. So it gives it a nice finished, finished edge. It sort of holds its shape so your gun doesn't fall out. Once you've done that, uh, keep going and sew the other three sides to the seam allowance on the bottom. And then once it's done, you can flip it all inside out. And you're going to have something that looks like that along the bottom. And then you're basically done. You can put your gun in it, see if it fits. Hopefully it fits. If not, you're going to need a little more seam allowance. But just fiddle around with it and test it out until you have something that fits around your guns. And once that's done, you're going to need to attach those holsters to your belt. So basically lay your belt out on a table or on the floor, whatever, and put your holsters on where they need to go. Uh, they're going to be opposites. So one's going to be facing one way, one's going to be facing the other way. Um, you can put them as low or as high as you want, but they need to be on those loops. That's how they do it in, you know, the reference images in, in Star Wars and whatnot. So once you have them down, you can uh, pin them in place or use the clips or whatever. And then you want to sew them down. And then when you're done, it's going to look something like this. Um, it's hard to tell on the form because my legs aren't there to hold the gun straight down. But that's generally how it looks. It's sort of like a cheap, easy way to do it. But if you want to do it fancier and more expensive, get better materials and uh, work on it. I might add a buckle to the front. But that'll be a thing for another day. Hopefully this helped. Um, it's kind of hard to explain all the bits. Especially the bottom, it's very difficult. But if you can understand it, hopefully it helps you put it together. Um, if you have questions, let me know. And I'll see what I can do, see what I can help you with in the comments. Um, yeah. Hopefully this helps. Um, bye for now.